as promised, a more in-depth tutorial on Salamander. A great little tune in dadgad tuning with a capo on the third fret. I'm playing a little uh, Orangewood Parlor guitar today. Inexpensive, cool little guitar. Plays nicely. All right, so um, let's get into the intro. Um, the intro is one of the things that gives me, it gave me the hardest, uh, one of the hardest times getting it up to tempo. I found it one of the hardest parts, although so simple. And uh, it goes, it starts on the A string. So we're playing the A string, or uh, A string, D string open, and then doing a pull off on the G string and going back to the A string. And then we're just we're only playing at this point the two middle strings. Getting it to tempo is uh, challenging still for me. That's a, that's a hard little riff. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting and knowing Steve Morris from the Dixie Dregs and Deep Purple back in college days before the Dixie Dregs' first uh, studio album. He gave me a piece of uh, priceless advice is don't practice the parts that you're already proficient with. Only practice the parts you're struggling with. So if, even if it's a three second or a four second or five second piece, a part of the song, just keep playing it over and over until you become pr proficient in that. So I must have spent 10 minutes just... <laughs> and gradually built it up. Um, that, that part gives me fits today. <laughs> All right, so we do that four times, and then we're coming up to this D-shaped chord. And in this section, we're only gonna be playing the upper four strings. So we're playing the D string open, and we're playing this D-shaped chord here. And we're gonna be just putting our uh, pinky down on the E string. Playing the G string open. before going to the next chord. So the tricky thing, if you listen, Ian's playing is so accurate and so amazing in this part because he's playing it so fast that you don't really hear the subtlety of the fact that he's, he's coming down and landing on the G string and then playing the D string open. G string open. G string, D string open. So when you get it up to speed, that kind of tends to get hidden in the mist, uh, you know, because it's going so fast. But I think that's such a cool strumming pattern. Alright, and then the next chord we're going to, and still we're playing the upper four strings. That's the chord. And we're going to be pulling our pinky uh, off, playing the E string open, and we're going to be moving up here as well. That's what it's going to be doing up top. And once again, he's, he's landing on the G string and, and playing the D string at times too. So if you listen, land on the G string, land on the G string, and then play the D string. So 
That's what I think is so cool about that little section. It's just hard that he's uh, he hard to hear that he's articulating all those little pieces of the chord. All right, so you do that twice, and then we're gonna we're gonna give a big all. Uh, it's seldom in this song that we strum all the strings together. Most of the time, we're focusing on tight little two-string or three-string sections. But this time, we're gonna give it the full Monty. And now we're going to focus back on the on just the D string, G string, and B string. So after that flourish, now we're back tightly focused on the middle strings. So the first part of that run up on the G string is... going to slide it up two more frets. So I'm really only playing the the D string and G string, but if you hit the open B a little bit, it's okay because it's kind of a drone string, but really focus on the D string and G string. And then we have to make a kind of fast transition here to So we're giving the B string a little bend and then playing it open. So I'm fretting actually the, the G string and B string with the fingers here with my index finger so I can do that quickly. Alright, so once we do that little bend, we do that pull off on the G string. So that's the next little part, we come down here. So once we're to that, uh, well, let's re re kind of repeat that whole thing. All right, so we're to there. Now we're going to be playing. little major chord triad coming down two frets and then back to there and then we're going to come down and we're going to play a similar rhythm but we're going to fret the two bottom strings here Now we're playing down on the bass strings, spreading there and then open. And then we're playing on the A string, a very fast pull off, E string open, strum. So now we're going to uh, repeat that run up, except we're going to add a little bit more harmony to it this time. So we're going to going to be fretting the uh, B string and E string here while we're playing that, and then sliding that whole figure up two frets.
And now we're going to kind of, we're, mostly we're still bending that B string, putting the emphasis on that. Except we're going to add just a little bit of the E string in. And then instead of just doing the single note here, we're going to add that note on the B string. Same, same little pull off there. And then the same here. So now we get to that cool little, uh, really Celtic sounding section after we, uh, okay, now we're coming up and we're playing, we're going to really focus on the two upper strings, the B string and the E string. So we're starting here and we're going to pull up, pull up, do a pull off. Once again, it's okay to hit a little bit of the G string open because it's going to act as a drone. And this is the, the fingering that works best for me is... You can either pull off on your pinky or the third finger, whichever is more comfortable, but then... Alright, so the fingering that's most comfortable for me is is to come up with the index finger and then the middle. And then slide it up two frets. And then you're going to come back down. But you're going to be plucking the two strings at the same time. Which gives it that such a cool chiming sound. But you can hear it, if you get the, B, uh, the G string ringing open, that's okay. So when we get to the end of the phrase, we do a slide up on the B string, and then just come down the B string. Now I'm playing the, uh, the B, string, B string fretted here, and I'm playing the top E string open. And you're going to slide that up. And finish like that. Now you can play that note either here or here. But either way, it's uh, find the way that's most convenient for you to get to the next chord, which is going to be... So we're just fretting the... The D string, we're playing the A string open, the D string here, and the E string here. So coming out of... Alright, so yeah, we... We're going to be just lifting our uh, finger off of the E string. And think about the strumming pattern that you've been doing through the whole song pretty much. So see the strum has the same feeling to it. And 
so you're going to do that twice. And then we're into this next little section. So now we're just playing this. We're giving the B string a little bend on the third fret. And then plucking the G string open. See, that's just a little minor. And then playing the G string open again. All right, so that's uh, that's that next part. And then it, it uh, does that four times and then it goes into the vocal. Once again, you're really focused in the center of the strings, the D string and G string mostly. You do throw that little thing in there. And then you're going to go to that same little minor thing. Now there's sort of an odd measure here when it goes. So he hits the D string open. Goes back to it again. And there's going to be that sort of odd measure again. So now we're just barring all the way across and we're play, playing the G string here, fretted and then open. And then I love this little dominant seven chord that he puts in here. So here we're playing the A string. We're not moving our bar here, we're just fretting the D string here and the B string way up here. And then we're gonna be coming back to this. And there's that sort of skip in the measure again. back to this chord and we we fret the B string here to kind of make a little minor chord and then back to that chord and then on the D string so here we're playing the D string is the bass string, the open G and open B ring out. And then we're coming down on the A string here and the B string here, lifting the B string off and then playing that on the E string. Repeat that four, three times, I think. And then the last time we're just doing that over and over again, not going up to the E string. And then he just cuts that off and plays the open A. And then he's 
back into that section and then repeats that whole repeats that whole thing Repeating that. And then repeat that. Do that four times and then the last time we're gonna we're gonna stay here and we're gonna do pull-offs on the B string. D string, A string, all off the same fret, and then we're going to play the E string open. And then we're coming up those notes, open A to open D. Coming back to the E string and playing, I'm sorry it's buzzing a little bit. And then we're playing that on the G string, repeating. We double up on that riff this time, play it twice. And I love that little, he just does a little pull off on the G and then lets it ring open as he's doing that, repeating that riff. kind of just do a upstroke and then end on that on the D string. And that's it. So cool little ending. So that's Dadgad tuning. Uh, once you get a little bit familiar with it, you can start noodling around. Uh, I've written quite a number of instrumentals in Dadgad tuning because it's such so just the open strings give you so many drone possibilities.